Hey everyone, Jake here from Unreal RPG Mastery. Welcome to the second part of our Dark Souls blocking tutorial series. First, I want to apologize for the delay in this series. We have been working super hard on finishing up an advanced combat system template that will be up for sale on the Unreal Marketplace soon, but we're hoping to get things back to the usual tutorial soon. We hope you guys are staying safe during these times, and we hope that you can learn a lot from our tutorials during all this quarantine time. And this is a demonstration of what you're going to have by the end of the tutorial series. First, before you can do this tutorial, you're going to need a test AI that can attack the player. But that way the player can have an attack to block. There are plenty of places here on YouTube where you can learn something like that. Okay, now open up the player character blueprint. Now right click and type in event point damage. And from here, let's print a string just to see if it's working. We'll print something like successful damage. Here I'm using event point damage. You should use the event for whatever type of damage you're using. If you don't know, you can use event any damage. Also, something else I wanted to note. Make sure you plug the AI of reference into the damage causer from the apply damage function. For this blocking tutorial to work, we need to know who the damage causer is. Okay, now let's test it out and see if it works. So as you can see, each time he hits the character, it's only calling apply point damage once. Okay, now that the AI is successfully attacking the player and dealing damage to the player, let's go ahead and open up the player character blueprint. Okay, now delete the print string and drag out from the damage causer, promote it through a variable, and we'll name this one attacking actor. Let's create a new macro, call it is character state equal. Okay, now get the player state, type an equal enum, okay, and now get a branch. Drag the true path and the false path into the outputs, and drag this exact into the input. Now we want to drag the character state to check into the input for the macro, and we'll call this one character state. Now drag out is character state equal, and if character state is equal to blocking, then we want to print a string just for testing. The string we want to print is blocking attack. And let's turn this text color to red so we can see it really well. Okay, and then let's copy it and paste it onto the false path. Instead of blocking attack, call this one receiving damage. Okay, now let's test it out and see what happens. And it's printing out blocking attack. And whenever I release the block button, it's printing receive damage. So now we got the base functionality for blocking attacks and receiving damage. However, we've got one problem. And the problem that we have is, is that whenever I turn around and face the opposite direction of the enemy, it's still printing out blocking attack. So the character can block the enemy's attack even if he's facing the opposite direction. So let's go ahead and fix that. So to fix that, let's create another macro. We'll call this one get angle. Okay, now type in get attacking actor. Then get actor location. Okay, now right click and type in get actor location. And from get actor location self, we want to find look at rotation. And we're going to check this from the player character's location to the attacking actor's location. Right click and type in get actor rotation. And from here, we want to drag out and type in delta. So we need to get the delta rotator. And from the delta rotator on the rotator return value, let's split the struct pin. Okay, and now drag out from the return value z yaw and type in in range float. And for the minimum, we want that to be minus 180. And for the maximum, we want that to be minus 135. Okay, now copy and paste it. And this one, we want the minimum to be positive 135 to positive 180 and plug the return value as a as the value for this one as well. And then type in or boolean. So this or boolean will return true if either this in range float or this range float returns true. Okay, now get the output. Now plug the logical or boolean value into the output of the macro. Okay, now go to the event graph. Okay, and now for blocking, we need to do a check. So get a branch. Okay, disconnect the true path, and we want this to be on the false path. On the true path, we want to receive damage. And on the false path, we want to block the attack. 
Okay, now let's test it out and see if it works. So right now we're blocking attack. When we stand from the opposite direction, we're receiving damage. Okay, so now that we have all the functionality implemented, let's add some animations and effects to really make it look nice. So what we can do for that is we can create a new function. Call this new function hit react block. Go back to the event graph, right where it's printing blocking attack. Let's drag out hit react block. Let's delete this print stream. And plug hit react block in. We can now open up the function. We need to get the anim instance. I already created a macro for that, so I'll go ahead and show you what I did with this macro. Drag out, get the mesh, and drag out from there, and type in get anim instance, and return the anim instance from the macro. So the first thing that we can do is play a blocking animation. So to do that, let's drag out the get anim instance macro that we created. Type in montage play. Here you can select a blocking montage, whatever blocking montage that you have. So the one I have is block guard. However, just playing an animation really isn't enough, so we're going to have to add some effects and sounds to really sell this hit. So let's add some metal impact effects whenever he's hitting the shield. So for that we can spawn emitter at location, and the location for that we actually need break the hit result, and we need to promote impact point to a variable. We'll just name it impact point, and we'll set this right before we check is character state equal. Okay, now go back to the hit react block function that we created. Now get the impact point and plug that into the location. And here you can select your metal impact particle effect. I'm going to select the one that I have. You can also play a sound at location, so let's go ahead and do that as well. And the location will also be the impact point. Here I'm just going to add a sword cling sound that I have. One other thing that we can do to make it look even better is play a camera shake. So right click and type in get player controller. Drag out from there and type in client play camera shake. Here you can choose your camera shake class. I've already created one, so I'm going to select mine. Okay, let's test it out and see how it looks. Okay, that works really well. Now let's create a reaction for the AI. Whenever he hits the shield, he gets knocked back a little bit. So this will actually be similar to what happens in Dark Souls whenever you attack an enemy that's blocking with a shield. So we're gonna do that with a blooper interface. So go to your blooper interface and create a new function. Call this one shield knockback. Okay, now go back to the player character. Okay, now right click and type in get attacking actor. From there, type in shield knockback message. Plug that into the montage play here. Okay, now go back to the test AI and make sure that the interface that you created this in is implemented. Type in shield knockback event shield knockback. Now we want to play in a montage. All right, so I already have a shield knockback reaction animation that I can play, so I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Okay, now let's test it out and see how everything works. For your block hit reaction animation, make sure enable root motion is checked true, so that way the player can't walk around whenever they're reacting to a hit. Okay, now let's add an animation for getting hit in the back. So go back to the player character blueprint and the event graph. Instead of printing receive damage, let's do the same thing we did here. Copy this and paste it here. And plug that into the true path here and the false path here. You can delete that. Here we want to play a hit react back montage. Okay, let's test it out and see how it works. It actually works really well. Now let's add some blood effects and some hit sounds whenever the AI is hitting the player in the back. So to do that, let's go back into the player character blueprint. Okay, now let's add the same code that we did here for the camera shake, play sound at location, and spawn emitter at location. Highlight all this and copy it. Paste it right here, and we need to play it right here before the animation is played. And the sound that is selected right now is a shield hit impact sound, so let's add like a flash hit impact sound. Okay, and for the emitter template for the spawn emitter at location, we want a blood slice effect. Okay, now let's test it out and see how it works. Everything so far is working really well, but we got one problem. Let me go ahead and show you what it is. 
plays the animation for getting hit in the back, even though he's getting hit in the front. So let's go ahead and fix that. To fix that, let's move this here, disconnect this branch, and let's check this before we check if the character is blocking or not. Okay, so let's create a new Boolean variable, and we'll call it back. And so on the true path, we need to set back to true. And on the false path, we need to set back to false. Okay, now we need to do the condition here to check if it's on the back or front. So instead, let's use back. Back is true, let's go down here. If back is false, let's do hit react block. And now from the montage to play, let's do a selector. We can use the back boolean here. So if back is true, we can play a back hit reaction montage. And if back is false, we can play a front hit reaction montage. Now, this really wouldn't work if you're being hit from the left or from the right. If you're being hit from the left or the right, you would have to go to this angle here and find the float ranges that are for the right and for the left. You would need to return right or left. You could do that with an enum, return right, left, front, back depending on the float ranges. But for the purposes of this tutorial, this will work just fine. So let's go ahead and test it out and see how it works. So when the character is blocking the front, he plays a blocking front hit reaction. When he turns around, he plays a back hit reaction. But when we're getting hit from the front while not blocking, he plays a front hit reaction. Something else that you could do here is if you have health and stamina implemented, on bl hit react block, you can you can do stamina cost and the decrease stamina. You could do, let's get the damage, let's promote it to a variable and call it receive damage. And you can re use the receive damage as the amount of damage done to, this, to your stamina. If you have a health bar implemented, you can do the same with the health bar if you're not blocking. Okay, now let's test it out. Okay, while blocking, the character stamina takes damage. When you use release block, the health takes damage. Turn around, get hit, use health, take damage. Next, I'm going to implement a way for the player to stop blocking and receive damage to their health whenever their stamina reaches below a certain point while blocking. So that way they can't just continuously block when their stamina drops to zero. You will need a health and stamina system implemented for this part as well. You can find plenty of tutorials for those here on YouTube. I'm just going to show you how to use the health and stamina values to achieve this with the block. So what we can do is we can get our current stamina, we can check is the current stamina greater than or equal to 5? And if blocking is pressed, then we can create a custom event, call it block attack. We can create another custom event, call it block released. And on press, we can call block attack. And on release, we can call block released. Okay, now go back to the event point damage. Here we can call block released. And here in this condition, we can call block pressed. We can call block attack. So we can try and block the attack. You could write some code in here to have some conditions whether or not you can block. So it'll attempt to block here if these conditions are true. If they're not true, it'll just continue on like normal. All right, now let's see how it works. Really well. Alright, now the character plays a blocking animation when the player is pressing block. The animation stops when the player releases the block. The block blends upper and lower body animations properly, and the character transitions in and out of the blocking state really well. And the player can also block the enemy AI attacks. We added hit effects and animations for blocking and not blocking. Lastly, we covered how to apply damage to the player's health and stamina while blocking and not blocking properly. Thanks for watching. I hope my tutorial was able to help you. If it was, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel.